repented from having made man and decided to eradicate him from the face of the earth. Only Noah had found grace in the eyes of God, who ordered him to construct a multi-storied ark in which to lodge himself, his family, and two of every type of animal on earth. A modern author, Willibald Sauerländer, wanted to take the analysis of the cycle of the seasons even further. In spring, half the landscape is in shadow, the other half in light. God the Father is in full light. The original sin is reflected in the opposition between day and night. This first painting would represent the state of man before the law. According to the same author, Poussin's summer was inspired by the commentaries of a Jesuit, Nicolas Serrarius, on the Book of Ruth. Boaz's alliance with Ruth presages the mystical marriage of Christ and the church. The tree itself would evoke the race of David. The stalks of wheat or the loaves of bread being prepared for the harvester's meal repeat the theme of bread as the symbol of Christ's body. In the same way, in autumn, the giant cluster of grapes carried by Moses' envoys would be both Christ suspended from the cross and an auger of wine, the symbol of Christ's blood. The woman on the ladder would be a new church, the wife of Christ who gathers fruit from the tree of life, whereas the woman who is walking away could be an allegory for the synagogue. The veil that falls from her basket hides her from the tree of life. Perhaps there would be yet another illusion. The opposition indicated between the fertile tree full of fruit, the church, and the sterile tree, the synagogue. Finally, still according to the same author, the deluge could be interpreted as a harbinger of the last judgment. Here also can be found elements inspired by Michelangelo's fresco in the Sistine Chapel, but treated in a much more sober fashion. Noah's Ark floating on the waters presages the nave of the triumphant church. The people in the foreground would represent the heretics who believed they could find salvation by themselves. Thus, this series of seasons could be read as a history of the redemption. But Christian history was not Poussin's sole source of inspiration. Spring is also the dawn of humanity. It's daybreak placed under the sign of Apollo, the sun god. Summer is man's maturity. It is earth. It's midday, the hour of harvests falling under the sign of the goddess Ceres. In Christian iconography, Ruth often takes on the attributes of the Greek goddess. A lover of antiquities in 17th century Rome interested in the great archaeological excavations, Poussin was concerned with truth. He extolled knowledge of ancient morals, weapons, customs, and, of course, clothing. Ancient clothing dominated. Summer is a Virgilian landscape. The group of five horses was inspired by a bas-relief from the Titus Arch in the Roman Forum. Autumn is the autumn of life, the beginning of the decline, and the chosen hour is that of the end of the afternoon. The grape harvest is placed under the sign of Bacchus, god of wine and drunkenness. Winter is the end of life, the hour is that of the setting sun. The furor of the unchained waters is represented by Pluto, the god of the underworld, among whose representatives is the serpent. Thus, the four seasons, the four times of the day, the four phases of the redemption, the four ages of life, the four elements, all these themes are linked in turn to the four biblical stories and the four ancient gods and are recombined in the idea of the cyclical return. 
Poussin was adept in the theory of musical and architectural modes that came from the Greek Pythagorean tradition. One subject must be under the domination of one mode, and in a series, it was necessary to alternate strong cycles and weak cycles. In the four seasons, spring and autumn include very few people, whereas summer and winter show many. In the same way, two serious scenes frame two cheerful ones. This way of organizing a series by modulating elements of decor, people, themes, and symbols is almost musical in expression. And this form in four movements, so characteristic of musical classicism, presages the sonata or symphony that would appear after Poussin. Such an organization of images could appear very scholarly. However, it escapes all intellectualism. That's because Poussin worked hard to make his composition accessible. The landscape is at the source of emotion and meditation even more than the story illustrated by the painting. The same objects, although changing from one painting to another, become symbols of fertility and destruction, of permanence and transience, of renewal and death. Poussin was close to a pantheistic vision, as if the old painter sought to lose himself in a broader order, that of nature. He picks up on his own account this Virgilian idea there is an analogy between individual history and the history of the world. Thus, the landscape is raised to the level of historical painting. If the Four Seasons, testamentary landscapes, tell both the story of nature and the story of man's redemption, they also seem to summarize the work and life of the painter. Spring, a paradise turning green with its loaded apple trees and its fresh prairies, could be a reminder of his native Normandy. The three following landscapes would be inspired by the Roman countryside, with its splendid summers, heavy autumns, and rainy winters. On the edge of the last of the canvases appears a serpent, a type of animal fetish that Poussin shows in drawings and in about 20 paintings. Perhaps an allusion to a biographical episode that will live forever unknown. The fascinating serpent is there as a symbol of menace, terror, and death, but also as a sign of the renewal of the cycle. Isn't it the serpent that, hidden in the foliage of spring, counsels Eve to taste the forbidden fruit so that everything will begin again. The serpent is Poussin's ultimate signature. A zigzag echoed by the divine lightning that splits the heavens, it also is the figuration of the nervous trembling that had seized the body and the hand of the painter. sadness, and the trembling of my limbs increases like the years. Consequently, I have been forced to abandon all work and to put my colors and paintbrushes aside. If I live through autumn, I hope to take them up again.